All right, y'all, new project for this fall. That's my, uh, my work trailer. This is my enclosed work trailer. And uh, we're gonna turn it into a camper this year. So I think it'd be super fun. Stick around. Um, oh, I think it's gonna be cool. All right, so here we go. We got a, this is my 2014 Diamond Cargo. Uh, this is a 10 foot with a two foot V nose, single axle enclosed trailer. Uh, this is what I use for my side work here. Uh, you know, just storing tools, hauling around stuff. Um, just a nice little, uh, nice little trailer there. So anyway, this is what we're gonna do with it. Um, I've got a, a door on the side and then these slide doors here, but I just cleaned it out for the year. No more tools in it. Uh, still got a little drywall and stuff, but uh, anyway, so this is what I'm gonna turn into a camper. I think this will be great. Uh, this is gonna give me a lot more room. It should tow really easily. Uh, you know, it's super lightweight and I'll be able to pack a lot more stuff in here than I will that that slide in pop up and I can kind of use this for a base camp, right? And then I'll still have the bed of my truck. So anyway, this is what we've got going for us in here. Um, like I said, I use this for a work trailer during the summer and then honestly, uh, in the winter time, this thing kind of becomes a, uh, a natural cooler, if you will. You know, once the temperatures start getting down, uh, you know, to the forties for the highs and, you know, around freezing for the low, I can throw a bunch of deer in here, keep them out of sun and I can age deer in here for, for like a week, you know, without any problems. So that's, that's kind of what you see on the floor there from, from the aging processes over the years. But anyway, we're going to turn this into a, a camper. I think it'd be fun. Um, I've got this nice little stove here that, uh, I think we're going to put in there and, uh, I'm gonna cut a hole somewhere in this and we're gonna put a, a stove in here. We're gonna have a cot. I'm gonna keep it pretty basic because I still wanna use this thing as a, as a work trailer in the summer, but I think there's plenty of room in here to do some cool stuff. So the sides just have kind of this Luon material on them. Uh, none of this thing is insulated. So that's my first step here is to actually take all of this off, all this stuff off here. And you, you can see that the framing here uh, this steel frame, this is nothing. This is the top here, actually. So we're going to pull all this, uh, all this Luon off. It's screwed on. And uh, then I'm going to get, and we're going to insulate this entire thing. My goal is to basically heat this sucker with a candle. Um, but we've got, the, we've got the stove there that we're going to be able to use. We're going to put some lighting in it, uh, set enough stuff down for a cot, you know. Just make it, a, make it a nice little base camp, if you will. So I won't quite be roughing it and I won't quite be living in luxury, but I'll tell you what, should be pretty nice and a pretty cool little project, should be fairly cheap to do and uh, I should be able to knock it out pretty quick. So we've got a nice little side door there so I can actually lock the, lock the back doors there. We'll just lock that off. I'm thinking stove there, cot here, cooler um you know it's i can stand up in this thing so i be able to even skin in here oh something cool got a got a nice door there so yeah we're gonna pull everything off that we can and we're gonna insulate this sucker as best as we can uh, i'm gonna try to insulate the floor ceiling walls everything we're gonna seal this sucker up good and uh yeah that's our project all right, so update on the uh, the trailer progress here. I'm halfway through with my dismantling. So it, this ended up being uh, like quarter inch AC plywood, uh, which is cool because what I thought were screws here uh, actually ended up being like a like a pass load type type nail. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but they ended up shooting it on actually rather than then screwing it on, uh, but they shot it into the steel like a pass loader ram set or something. So anyway, it did not come out, um, but the fact that it was plywood helped me out because uh, I was able to get behind it and, and pull it through. So I'm halfway finished here and uh, you know, <laughs> plywood's expensive and I'm already gonna spend a lot of money on foam. So that's why I'm going to all this trouble. I could have went over it, but then I would have had to buy new plywood and, Oh, I don't really mind throwing another hour at it to, to knock this out. I'm just going to nip all these all these nails off here after I get done. But you can see here that's that's one inch because I used one inch tubing for the framing of the trailer. So I'll be able to put uh, put some foam in there. I'll lose a little bit, I guess. Uh, you know, 
I'll lose a little bit there by having the steel because there won't be any insulation there. But man, it's gonna make such a difference. And this is a tiny enough space anyway. Uh, I don't think it'll matter. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with the floor. And this is a piece of three quarter inch plywood that they've got uh, screwed right down to the uh, to the frame of the trailer. And I would like to insulate it somehow. And I'm not sure if I may just come up underneath. Um, if I put one inch underneath it and then throw another piece of plywood up, I'm going to be right there kind of at the edge of my, my headroom space. And I, I don't definitely don't want to duck. So I may end up actually just getting up underneath there and and putting some uh, some foam underneath there and just seeing how long it'll last. And I know the road will beat it up eventually, but if it lasts a little bit, uh, then I can shoot it up and screw through the floor. But you know, that's what we've got so far. Halfway done. Um, and then uh, this is what I so this, is, so this is what I've got halfway done. Got everything laid out. I'm gonna have to nip some staples. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pulling out just with the screw holes because it's plywood. So anyway, saving it all. And that's what we got left to do. So, all right, let's do this. Halfway done. You have to work with me. It's getting dark outside, so I gotta leave the camera out there. So, anyway, got everything stripped. Um, like I said, I know I'm gonna lose a little bit of, uh, of you know, insulative R value or whatever you want to call it uh, by not insulating these these ribs here. Um, there's what three six. I don't know, twenty of them or something. That's an inch and a half wide. So, I mean, I'm losing a little bit. Uh, that being said, I'm trying to do this on a budget and you know, I would have had to buy uh, additional sheeting and you know, then you guys know lumber price is stupid right now. So don't have to do that now if I, uh, if I do this and like I said, you know, this is a 10 foot by six foot box. So I don't think I'm going to hurt myself too awful bad, um, you know, by, by doing that. The only thing I got left is these doors here behind me. I think I'll pull those off. I think I'll separate those doors out and see see if I can get some insulation in them. Those things are about an inch thick and I think they're just hollow back behind there. So I'll pull those screws off and uh, see if I can get some, some insulation in the doors there and take the hinges off. But got the roof of everything opened up, all the walls. So. This door, I don't know what I'm gonna do about this door here. I may see if I can't pull this apart and maybe spray some foam in there or something. But like I said, hell, this is a 10 by six area. So, you know, anything I can do is gonna help it. And I don't think, you know, having a little bit here and there is gonna, it's gonna hurt things too awful bad. Like I said, I'm gonna put some one inch rigid board. Pretty simple, straightforward. Like I said, this wasn't gonna be a, a high dollar makeover by any means, but I think I think what I'm gonna do is gonna help me considerably, um, you know, especially with that that stove there. So I got this little stove right here. Um, I was gonna build one, but I bought this stupid little thing for a hundred bucks. The pipes are backwards, so I don't understand that. It looks like they use like exhaust pipe, but they put the pipes backwards, so I'm gonna have to do do some working on that to flip those pipes back around so the so the creosote falls back down in the stove. But anyway, I think I'll get some fire bricks and see if I can't shove in that stove. And that way I can build up a little thermal mass in the stove. But I mean, hell, I think this will suit me just fine. We're going to take some measurements, do some figuring, and, uh, and we'll check back with you all tomorrow. It's been fun. All right, so new day. Um, I got insulation and Luan yesterday. So I got enough insulation to do this. I got a couple pieces of Luan to do the ceiling here. I want to make ceiling and the walls match the same way. So anyway, um, trying to kind of, I'm a little under pressure here. 
We're leaving in a week. Uh, and this is not done. And I got a bunch of other stuff that's not done either. So anyway, go up through here, pull on these nails here. Um, I'm just using a pair of horse nippers uh, or hoof nippers. I, this is what we use all the time when we're pulling nails on pole buildings and stuff. But it's stupid loud, but it works really great. Um, you know, but it's crazy loud. But anyway, pull on a bunch of those nails and uh, then I'll get everything slicked up, get it insulated. But yeah, I gotta get this stuff done. It just rained a bunch, the camera's fogging up, but yeah, I'm gonna go through here and pull all these nails. It's a little extra work on my end, but uh, it saved me a ton because if I'd have just ripped all that stupid plywood off, that'd have cost me, you know, damn near double what I got in materials already. So anyway, camera is fogging up, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and keep pulling these nails here. I got probably like, I don't know, 14 or 1500 more to go and, uh, and then we'll get to insulating. All right, update it. Finally quit raining. There's another storm coming, but I haven't been able to film much because it's a tiny little area and it's raining. So uh, anyway, I've got, I don't know, better than half of this sucker insulated. Um, takes a little time to do all this. I'm cutting them in super tight. Uh, but yeah, I got the, the ceiling. I got one more piece to cut for the ceiling. And then I just got to go around and uh, and finish off my top. I, I ended up just going four foot wide and stacking them. It's kind of a better use of my material because um, this stuff's not cheap. So anyway, this is one inch uh, rigid foam board. So it's got an R5 value to it. Uh, you know, the reason I went with rigid is, you know, because it won't settle. You know, this thing's going to have a lot of miles on it. Uh, you know, I'm going to use it in a couple weeks. I'm going to go put, you know, almost 3,000 miles on it. So I didn't want something that was going to settle. This rigid won't settle. Um, I don't think it'll be real noisy. I mean, it may squeak a little on a big windstorm when it moves around, but I think it'll be fine. So anyway, I'm going to finish insulating this thing here. And then I think I am going to uh, put a vapor barrier, just a plastic on before, uh, before I put my, my plywood back on. So anyway, just plug it away out of here. Like I said, there's not much to see. It's just measure cut, measure cut foam but uh anyway everything's looking good it's all tight um i am gonna spray foam a little bit i got some uh you know for some little couple little gaps here but for the most part I, I can get all this stuff with with the insulation so there's a few places i'm gonna squirt a little spray foam in but yeah pretty happy with it i don't know if it's just the fact that um maybe it's in my head but i feel like it's warmer in there already so anyway i'm gonna keep going i've got a few hours of daylight left and i can do a lot of this stuff in the dark too so um, that's kind of the plan. It's going to rain again, but we'll keep chucking at the uh, at the insulation here. So a little update here uh, before it gets dark. The rain finally stopped, so that's a good thing. <laughs> I swear it hasn't it hasn't rained in like two months, and then it it rains the one day I need to be outside working on this, right? So anyway, I've got all but everything insulated here. Um, I'll take the camera off in a second and kind of give you a little better view. It's just so tight in there. Uh, but yeah, pretty happy how it works. I've got like almost no waste, so pretty pretty happy with that. So all right, so I just finished this door here. I just pulled it off, and you can see crammed as much insulation in that door as I can. I've still got to do this door, but like I said, it's gonna get dark. So um, anyway, pulled that door off. Kind of a pain, honestly. That's all the waste I have. I've had to move everything in and out, like. 15 times today because of the rain, but pretty happy with that. Um, I've got one door, one door left. I got a few little odds and ends there, but I got that piece left there, which will get me that door and should get me this door here. I've got to take this door apart as well. So then all I lack is right there, uh, the corner piece there, and then this, this header piece right there. And then I will have this whole thing insulated. Uh, and then I can just go back and start screwing off, um, start screwing off the, the plywood. I've got some Luon for the ceiling there. And uh, then she'll be pretty much sealed back up. So yeah, I got my little wood stove here. I gotta clean up my mess. That's for chipmunks in case you guys are wondering. I'm getting overrun with chipmunks. So just keeping it out here. I've, I've got three today. So pretty happy with that. Um, so anyway, yeah, stove. I don't know what I'm going to do with the floor. I've been thinking about it a lot all day long as I've been doing this. And I may end up just laying 
this one inch on the bottom and then covering it with uh, with like an athletic type matting something with some real rigidity I don't know I'm, I'm struggling because I know if I go underneath here uh, the squirrels and the mice will just eat it up if I don't cover it and if I cover it you know running around all winter um, I'll just rot out whatever I I sandwich it with so I don't know unless I go treat it and then that's just gonna be a pain and super costly so like I said this is not gonna be permanent that's why I like this stuff here is fine so like this stuff here is fine because you know once I cover it, you won't see it but all the extra stuff you know I really only need this thing for about 30 days and then uh, the rest of it's gonna be a work trailer but pretty happy so far um, that's kind of my update there so like I said got everything insulated and uh, yeah I'm gonna work into the night y'all um, but I thought I'd give you a quick little update all right so update um, I got everything insulated it is insulated um, I mean it's tight in here and I, I I was gonna spray foam a little bit but honestly I couldn't find any places that really need it I mean I spent a lot of time cutting in everything super tight and um, yeah I'm very happy with it so what I just did here this took a little doing but uh, I got her up there so I think condensation um, is going to be an issue because I'm gonna have this thing so tight and hopefully hopefully plenty warm so I feel like condensation is gonna be an issue so I went ahead and I put some uh, some four mil plastic, and I basically made a whole envelope around this thing. Um, I actually didn't even piece it in or overlap it at all. I went full on like a dome, basically. I don't know if that was necessary or not, but I was doing it, so I figured I might as well. And hopefully, what that'll do is, if I do get condensation buildup. It'll let it run all the way to the floor. So hopefully it'll stop a lot of that condensation, just having that, you know, that, that air gap there. Uh, it's sealed up pretty tight, but if, if I do end up with some condensation, uh, because all I got is this R5 and then aluminum, hopefully it'll work its way down off to the side and, uh, and not be, you know, into my, into my plywood and whatnot. Because I, I really do think condensation is going to be an issue. So anyway, I just got all this kind of tacked up here and draped up here. I'm going to start working on my ceiling right now. Uh, that way I can butt my walls up to it and it'll look just a little better. Uh, my walls, they're all established obviously because that's what thats what it had, but it didn't have a ceiling in it. So I've got some quarter inch lou on here and the way this stupid thing is laid out, it's going to be kind of funky, but I'm going to work my way through it uh, with as few splices as possible and, uh, and kind of work my way out and do the ceiling. Uh, for the most part and then uh, then start putting the walls up but yeah this is where we're at now we got got it all insulated and uh, and now we're gonna start sheeting I got that sheet cut behind me so I guess we'll see see what it's gonna take all right so update it's dark again obviously this is the next day oh man it just gets dark so early you gotta work in the dark but anyway we got lots of lights that's a good thing for us so anyway uh, putting up the last piece minus that piece actually and that piece is staying down because I got to do some stuff for for getting the stove but uh, anyway putting up the last piece and then all I've got to do is just finish trimming it out but um, you know that's just kind of screwing the trim pieces on like I said this is kind of the reason why I spent all the time to strip it off because I mean this the the Luon for this stuff was like I think Luon was 24 bucks or something um, you know, I ended up buying three sheets to finish the roof, but I'd have had to buy, you know, another eight or nine sheets to do the sides if I'd have ripped it off. So I saved, saved myself a couple hundred bucks there. Uh, not only that, I kind of gained all the, the work of, you know, having the trim pieces and everything else. So um, I kind of hurt myself in time to, to take it apart, but at the same time, I saved myself whenever the, it goes back in like this. So anyway, this is the last piece here. Uh, I've got all my plastic folded off, so the entire inside of this thing is now in a in a four mil plastic envelope, basically. So hopefully, if I have any condensation issues, it'll all run down. I won't have won't have anything to deal with like that. I think I'm gonna have some condensation issues, um, you know, just being in the the extreme temperature swings that I'm gonna put this in. I mean, I'm hopefully to have this sucker 70, 75 degrees whenever I'm cold. 
coming in, maybe even warmer than that, and it's gonna be, you know, zero outside. So, anyway, last piece here. Figure out which way this thing goes. And we'll slap that up there. And then, like I said, gotta put the trim piece on. But yeah, we're getting closer. I get the get all the trim work up here and uh, like I said, they shot that in with like a pass load deal and I'm just going back with a, a self-drilling pan head here. All right, so I got things tidied up in here. Um, so I'll let you kind of in on the my thought process here. So obviously, like I said, I've got, I've got 10 foot plus about, you know, a foot, foot and a half of dovetail there. So not a ton of space to work with, but I wanted to maximize the most of my space. So what I wanted to do is I kind of staged out a little bit of how I think I'm going to have this thing. Um, if the past is any indication, it's all going to change. But I think this is what it's going to be like. So I've got this cot here set up. So this is what I'm going to be sleeping on in here. And uh, my, my plan is, because I've got this door right here, so this is going to be the door that I'm going to use primarily. I'm not going to use the doors in the back that, that I'm filming through. Those will just stay shut all the time for the, for the most part. Um, so I've got my cot set out here, and I'm trying to figure out where I want my stove. So I've got this, this little stove here, and I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want it, um, you know, so where it's not in the way, but still efficient enough. So I've got my cot set here. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna sleep right here with my head facing back towards you guys. Reason being is I want to be able to position my, my myself to where I don't have to get up out of bed to feed the stove. If that makes any sense, um, I I, I want to be able to just kind of roll over and feed the stove and roll back to sleep, right? So I've got my cot positioned right here. Now obviously with this stove I want to be able to cook off of it too. Um, and I hate just laying laying around all day. I like to have a chair. So I've got this this little, it's a blind chair is all it is, but it, it's a small chair, uh, got an armrest and a backrest, so it's pretty dang comfortable really. And I want to be able to utilize it as far as my cooking with with this stove right because I mean that's the that's the purpose of this thing is to heat and to cook right I don't plan on having a a gas um, you know grill or or skillet or anything I think it's just too much I, I just I just want to utilize the wood stove so got my cot set right there roughly a foot from the back of the trailer I let my head's not up against the cold wall there um, and then I, I've Got myself kind of positioned here, so I've got a little bit of open space up there for coolers, gear, uh, potential skinning activities. I don't know. I, I got I got some extra space up there, and I, I want to leave that there. And I've got my chair set here, so I was trying to figure out my stove height as well. Um, I hate having a stove right on the ground where you got to like bend over to feed it and and kneel down. You guys have seen the stove in my first shed. I've got it raised way up off the ground so I don't have to do that. So trying to kind of figure out spacing. I think this is nice right here because I can sit in this chair um, and if I if I build myself like a little fold down table or something, I can use that for kind of a counter uh, to, for meal prep or, or just really anything. And that kind of keeps all that back there kind of... Uh, kind of for storage or whatnot and I could still add different tables or counters or whatever but I think that's kind of my setup here uh, I've got this stove sitting on a five gallon bucket so I'm actually just going to extend the legs down and then uh, like I said yeah, you can see here whenever it comes to the sleeping time I'll uh, you know I can I can lay down here in my cot if I have some some wood position there you know it gets cold or whatnot I, uh, I wake up and I can just easily have a, a night's worth of firewood, chuck it, don't even have to get out of bed, and uh, you know I'm good to go sleep for the next however long. Like I said, I'm not sure exactly how well this thing's going to be. Uh, I may have to feed the fire, you know, every couple hours. I may have to feed it once a night, you know, who knows. Uh, this is just a cheap little 
little steel stove. I did line the inside of it with fire bricks, um, so I will get you know some thermal mass out of that. But anyway, as far as coming out of the the trailer here, I think what I'm going to do is I don't want to come out of the roof because I think that's going to be harder to flash. I think it'd just be easier to come down the side. So that's why I left out this this panel here. So this stove here has like roughly a three and a half inch pipe uh, as far as the flue pipes there. And I want to come about as high up as I can in my trailer. That way I, I kind of gain two things. I gain the most heat out of that flue, you know, because this isn't a super efficient stove. And it gives that gas enough, you know, a little bit longer to cool before it actually exits the wall. So kind of a twofold deal. So I think what I'm going to do is I've got the stove, you know, roughly you know, foot, foot and a half off of the end of the trailer. Nice for my cot. Um, and then what I'm, I'm going to do is I've got this piece of six inch aluminum pipe. This is obviously just an aluminum sided trailer. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to take and take a actual, another piece of aluminum and fasten it to the, the steel studs here and probably come up about right there, honestly. Uh, probably about a foot from the ceiling. That way I give myself some air gap there. Obviously, in case you guys haven't figured out, there's no code with this. It's just me winging it. Uh, you know, if I die, that's for my own stupidity. But anyway, with this six-inch pipe, uh, you know, that'll give that pretty good little air gap there in between that, uh, that three-and-a-half-inch pipe. So it should, should be pretty safe. Uh, now I'm just going to drill a hole on the outside there and then just run a bolt and a and a washer through it with some silicone that'll make my seal gasket whenever I'm not there and then whenever I come set up all I've got to do is you know I'll have this piece of aluminum here basically and it'll act as kind of my rest and I'll be able to stick my stove pipe uh, you know right through there I'll, I'll just take I've got like six feet of this pipe here and when, now that I've established my height I can just weld in a 90 to it uh, you know so I'll just kind of, my setup will be, I'll just set the stove up and I'll just kind of warm everything in, drop it in, and uh, should work pretty slick, I think. So anyway, like I said, I think this, this piece of six inch pipe, you know, that, that'll give me a good one inch air gap out of there. And I think that's, uh, that's pretty efficient. I mean, this stove's not going to burn that hot anyway, you know, you just can't build a big enough fire in it. So it's just a tiny little stove, but Anyway, I'm going to work on that now, um, kind of get my, my plate established. I'm going to get an aluminum plate and uh, cut it to, to fit this here and then drill a couple of holes in it and, and sandwich uh, this six inch through there. I think it'll work out pretty good. Okay, so let me show you what I got here um, before I put it all together. So what I ended up figuring on was I came 11 inches off of the nearest flammable surface up high uh, to the center of the pipe. So, uh, you know, three and a half inch pipe. So I'm like eight inches off of, uh, you know, the top of the pipe to this surface here. And if I feel like it's getting too hot, I can always put some drywall up there or something. You know, like I said, I'm going to I'm gonna run this thing for a couple of days before I go take it out, you know, and make sure everything's, everything's good. But anyway, this is what I did. So I, um, I cut a hole. Uh, in, in my insulation two inches wider than this plate that I made up. So I took a piece of uh, eighth inch aluminum here and then I cut that piece of six inch um, six inch piping and I cut it an uh, inch and an eighth basically so where it's going to fit up tight against this outside edge here. Uh, so then I cut a hole in this that's just, just about the size of the pipe. So where the pipe will just barely slide through there so where it'll catch it so where it'll keep it from rocking um you know in in heavy wind or if this trailer gets moving around or whatnot i'm not gonna drive around with it but uh you know i, just, I didn't want it resting up it and falling around so i'm gonna do the same thing out here i'm gonna drill the same hole so it's actually gonna have two pivot points so that pipe will actually be resting on this eighth inch aluminum but it won't be uh you know it won't be resting on anything flammable and this eighth inch aluminum with the six inch pipe behind it, you're gonna have that whole air gap there. I think I'll be just fine. So then I went and cut an additional two and a half inches of my 
of my insulation away from the outside of the six inch pipe and then uh, you know, to try to cover myself from, from any heat. I, I think I'm gonna be fine, but like I said, I might have a carbon monoxide and a smoke detector and everything in here, but I just don't wanna take any chances. So anyway, basically what's gonna happen is this plate is gonna get mounted like so on the inside right there. And I'm gonna drill another three and a half inch hole through it. And I'm gonna mount this plate through and then my pipes are all gonna stick through there and uh, you know, basically have that have that additional air gap um you know to kind of kind of cover myself and then after that then i can come up with my sheeting and and finish everything off okay so update uh went ahead and added some legs onto it there anyway that got my stove up so that let me now measure my height uh what i got going on here so the height is critical because you know the way I'm kind of doing this, where I'm centering up this this pipe and using it for a, kind of a, a guide, I need an exact height. So I've got that. So what I'm going to be able to do is essentially whenever I get to wherever I want to be, I'll set up the stove like this, and then I'll actually run the pipe from the outside and push it into this, uh, you know, into the sleeve there, and that'll give me you know, my, my connection point. This stove, this was some Chinese little stove I bought for like a hundred bucks. And it, it, it's just like three and a half inch exhaust pipe uh, is what it came with for a flu. The problem is they had it backwards. Uh, they, they had it to where basically the creosote would fall out. You can see there was a little bit there whenever I, I burnt it in. Um, the, the creosote was actually flowing down and I don't want that you know if you damper this sucker down you know for the evening you don't want to wake up and there's being creosote everywhere so I cut one of these flanges off and then welded it to the bottom so I reversed all the pipes so now all the pipes are actually falling into themselves proper so where that creosote will actually fall back down into the stove rather than outside um, so anyway a little modification to my hundred dollar stove but you know hundred dollar stove so anyway I just marked here on this pipe so what I'm gonna do is I line this sucker up uh, put this sleeve in here and then I got everything aligned and true how I want it and I marked around that that pipe that's gonna make my 90 so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and cut this flange off then drill a hole through the center of that pipe and then weld that flange into that hole and then cap this pipe. And then that way I'll be able to set this pipe in here and then run that into that flange and I'll have a, a nice airtight fit that'll, that'll work. So like I said, sorry, it's, it's dark. I'm doing the best I can. I know, you know, you guys would probably like to see a little bit more, but I'm in a time crunch and, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get stuff done. So I'm giving you some updates here. But anyway, I'm going to go modify this piece of pipe. Once I get that done, our stove is is pretty much set. Um, the thing came with like double-sided tape for the gasket material, so I got to glue new gasket material. But after that, then I can put my my last piece of sheeting up here and finish that. And then, I mean, we're just kind of you know accessorizing and putting lights on at this point. So that's awesome. But anyway, gonna go finish this. We'll be back. Got smoke coming out the chimney. All right, so it's been just a minute. I kind of, kind of got everything done, uh, and I didn't, didn't stop. But I'll, I'll catch you guys up here. So um, I went ahead and I, I got everything uh, sealed, sealed back up. The only thing I've got left to do is I am gonna go ahead and caulk all the joints again. Um, I just don't have any, uh, don't have any caulk with me. So gotta pick some up. But yeah, other than that, I've got everything else put back up. I just gotta, I want to caulk it back again and make it make it look half-ass presentable but anyway uh, as far as the stove goes here we got the uh the panel back there so that's what i ended up doing uh, like i said i've got my air gap and i've got that piece of aluminum added another piece of aluminum back here um you know just for a little bit of security um i'm pretty good actually i just lit the fire here so I got my piece welded up. Uh, that's what I ended up doing there. And I was pretty happy with my welding job, but you know, just so I don't 
die if it does start leaking for some odd reason. Uh, I went ahead and I, I fire caulked uh, all my weld joints there. Everything else will creosote up real good. It's so well as welds, but I had the stuff, so I figured, huh, I'll do it and uh, make it make it so. I just lit a fire in here. This is what I ended up doing here uh, with the stove. But yeah, I added I have to build some sort of a, a tray or something so I can drag ashes out. Got a little ripping fire in there. But you can see all the fire bricks. So I, uh, I've i added now 11 fire bricks to this stove. So I have increased the weight and thermal mass substantially uh, with that little stove. I kind of killed some of the room in the firebox, but I don't know. I don't think it'll matter. If it does, I can always take them out. So I've got fire bricks on the bottom, and I've got fire bricks uh, all the way around the side. And you know, eventually they'll heat up. But you can see I've got a I've got a ripping fire in here. And, you know, I can hold my hand up until you know the top. So that, I mean, it's working pretty well. And I mean, it it's hot, hot right there. So it'd be good for cooking too, because it's forcing all the heat right there. Give me a little bit of thermal mass. So as far as the flooring goes, um, I thought about it long and hard, and this is what I ended up going with. So, like I said, this is this is a work trailer first and foremost. So that's what it's going to have to be after we we live in it for a little while. So um, I went ahead and I just went with the same one inch uh, rigid board on the floor here. Like I said, this has got an R5 value uh, to it. I used up every little piece I had. <laughs> And, uh, and cut her in tight so anyway uh, that's what I'm gonna do and you can see here I've got this I don't know it's like athletic matting it kinda it comes together and you can buy it you know I think like 32 square feet at a time but it's kind of in a puzzle piece and it actually fits pretty tight um, you know together so that's what I'm gonna do with the flooring you know cuz I'm kinda running out of headroom in here too I could still Still don't have to duck. I can still stand up, but I'm gonna go get some flooring, some of this, some more of this flooring enough to finish out, and I'll cut it all in tight. And you know that that's some pretty rigid stuff, and it'll give me a little bit of insulation too. Surely that stuff's like half inch thick, so surely it'll give me some sort of an R, R value. But anyway, that's kind of the the game plan I'm going with with the floor. Like I said, I just fired the old stove up just to cure out uh, all my cement and fire caulking you can see it's starting to really cure itself out now um that pipe is i mean it's not stupid hot for as ripping as a fire is in there so i don't think i'm gonna have any issue i mean that's about as big of a fire in there as i think i'm gonna be able to build uh you know the thing at one time so pretty happy with that work on building a little shelf there like we had talked um a little fold down shelf next and uh, then I've just got to deal with lighting. I've got a bunch of LED strip lighting that I'm going to wrap around this sucker. And it's dimmable. So hook it up to a big, i got a 100 amp lithium battery. Should work quite well. If not, I've got my generator too. But it's always nice to be silent. So anyway, that's the update. Um, pretty happy with how it turned out. Like I said, get my flooring and I can, I can move in. But yeah, I think it's going to be pretty dang warm in here i mean the amount of heat that this this stove is throwing right here um i think it's gonna roast me out of here i, I really do i think it's gonna be nice i think i'm gonna end up having uh you know to open windows and doors and and that's that's what i want i mean i can feel the heat it's probably 40 degrees right now and uh you know i can just step in here and i've got you know all the doors open and it's I mean, substantially warmer. So, anyway, that is what I got for you all. Um, like I said, go build me a little, a little cooking table here, and uh, I think that will, uh, that will about do her. So, that's awesome. All right, y'all. I'll check back with you uh, whenever we kind of get her finalized. 
So was it all worth it? <laughs> yeah, it was. Getting this trailer done, check out my view. I mean, how do you beat that? Like, that is pretty cool. So I am in what, I mean, literally middle of nowhere, Colorado. Um, so I know I, I hurried a lot, uh, kind of through this build. Like I said, I had three days to do this before I headed out here and we are jumping forward. This is actually, I have been out here. This is day number 14 that I have been out here in Colorado or I guess really just living in this trailer more or less. Uh, I've, I've spent 14 nights in this trailer and I'll give you a walk through here real quick of, of what it looks like after 14 days. I know I kind of jumped around and, uh, with finishing it, but yeah, what do you think about that view right there? <laughs> I mean, that's so cool. So anyway, stove's been doing great. This thing drove, you know, uh, I think it all set down about 1400 miles to get out here. Um, so yeah, here we go. Got the generator out here. Um, I'll show you the battery setup I've got in there, but I was just charging the batteries this morning. I'm gonna leave out here in just a little bit. And I wanted to have enough juice to, uh, to get myself, you know, home. It's going to take a couple of days to drive home. But anyway, I'll show you the back end here and then I'll just walk you through. So here we go. This is, uh, this is what she looks like. This is what I've been living in for 14 days. Um, I think the where I actually, I kind of forgot where I left you off was, uh, I was just installing the, the flooring, the insulation. So I ended up going with the, uh, the R5 on the bottom and then the, the Harbor Freight puzzle pieces, uh, the matting here. And I will say, I've been out here for two weeks and the temperature has not been above freezing for, for two weeks. It's got real close a couple of times. That being said, I think uh, nine or ten days out of these two weeks, the lows have been in the low single digits. So it has been chilly, um, and and this thing has performed well. Uh, there's the stove, been running that. Uh, got some some pine or whatever they've got out here. It, it does not do what oak does at home. I can tell you right now. Um, but yeah, there's the old stove. You can tell she's been. <laughs> She's been used. I've been running her every single day and uh, stovepipe works great. This thing draws pretty good. I ended up lining the entire three sides of this thing with um, with fire bricks. So it makes it really easy to cook on because all the heat's coming up right there and I also get a little bit more thermal mass. So anyway, I'll give you a walk through here. Like I said, this is kind of a, this is, this is what it looks like. Um, for 14 days so I've got my cot there he said I've got my extension cord run out for my battery um, I've got eye bolts run through the the decking of the floor so I've actually I shut the stove down a while ago but how I just hauled it out here was um, I took that stove pipe down and I just strapped that stove straight to the uh, straight to the floor of the trailer and it, it rode all the way out here no problem uh, the proximity to my bed has been awesome. I just keep a little, I guess you call it a day box or a night box, uh, and I can just open the stove and feed it, uh, throughout the night. I don't even have to get out of my, my sleeping bag. So anyway, we'll step inside here and, uh, give you all a little, little better look. So anyway, obviously my cot there, uh, with my sleeping bag. This is kind of my cooking, editing, I don't know, it's where I've been living, right here at this little fold down table here. Um, I've got a, a little propane cooker there that I made off the side of the table for just heating up uh, quick stuff. Got a little charging station there. I'll step forward here. This is kind of the, the junk mess. Uh, but there's really no good way to organize this because it's been so cold. I've had to bring in a lot of uh, a lot of battery stuff and a lot of food stuff that I just I had kind of intended on setting outside, but it's just been so cold. Um, I need to I need to bring it inside. So a little bit of a cluster here, but it's worked out just fine. Uh, got kind of my my clothes there, kind of everyday clothes and my hunting clothes in that situation. I've got some food products that more or less I'm using that cooler like a refrigerator. Um, that's just water for washing and, you know, kind of heating up on the stove, taking a, 
uh, sponge bath, if you will, or, you know, just washing up dishes and stuff. I've got some more food items over there in that corner. Uh, over here is kind of a mess here. I'm trying to clean up all the wiring, but I've got, I did bring a boot dryer out here just because my feet sweat so bad. So got a couple of, of boot mats there. Um, and then this is the whole thing of running this is just a, just a thousand watt inverter. That is a, a Roy power, a hundred amp lithium battery. And uh, I've been using that thing. I think I've charged it two weeks. I think I've charged it three times um, since I've been out here. And that's running the boot dryer and charging all my cameras and laptop and everything. So I've been very happy with that. Uh, other than that, got some LED lights, some dimmable LED lights, little coat racks. Like I said, right in here, it's, it's over 50 degrees in here right now. And... Uh, I just opened the doors, but yeah, pretty comfortable here. Got me a little mirror there and a uh, smoke alarm, carbon monoxide alarm, um, just for safety. Got my buddy heater sitting there uh, for, you know, the, the great thing about having that buddy heater is whenever you come in, because this thing won't hold heat throughout the day, uh, so I can warm this thing up from 40 degrees to 70 in about five minutes with that buddy heater. I'm just not crazy about leaving the buddy heater run all the time. So other than that, just a bunch of other junk chargers and whatnot. Um, I did this the other night. I've, you can see over my mat in the last couple of days, I've cleaned a grouse and skinned a coyote in here too. So it was a little bit tight, but, uh, and I didn't really have the right equipment. You can see I've had to use some uh, pennies and some some engineering to get that that skinning deal up. I hadn't really anticipated on it, but hey, it worked out perfect. Uh, the vent on the trailer works great. I use that almost every night, uh, you know, just because this thing will heat up so quick whenever you're cooking. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of it. Got some other food items and sauces and drinks and whatnot and stove. I mean, it's it's cozy. I think would be the, the proper term. That being said, cozy is good whenever it is five, six degrees outside. Um, now that being said, it's awesome. This foam matting on the, that I put on the floor, I can literally step on it, uh, with bare feet in the morning and, and I've had no problems. So, uh, very happy, very happy with the thing. I mean, like I said, I've, this is day number 14. This is two weeks I've been sitting in here and, uh, you know, I, I can't complain at all. Um, I, I haven't struggled or or felt like I uh, was roughing it, really. I mean, I've always had a nice warm bed to sleep in. I've had a place to cook my meals. Um, it's just been... It's just been pretty nice, really. A uh, lot better than the uh, than the slide-in camper. I mean, I've had enough room around here, even with having to bring in all this extra stuff that I hadn't really anticipated on. So, now... It's been two weeks and I rushed through this build. So what would I change in the future? <clears throat> Cause I am gonna, I am gonna change a few things around. Um, so first off here, I think what I'm gonna do is, and I, like I said, this is still a work trailer over a camper, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I can, I can take this floor out you can see there's, I, I, I've been using this thing. It's been two weeks. Um, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it. So anyway, what would I change? Um, nothing with the way the insulation is. Uh, it, whenever it does get down into the single digits, this thing does great until about 20 degrees. Um, single digits, the, the heads on these screws will actually frost up right where I, right where I sleep. And you can actually see, I, I knew condensation was going to be an issue and I'm glad I went ahead and put that vapor barrier because you can see, see right here, actually, uh, there's a little bit of a watermark where those, those screw heads, they'll just completely frost up and then they thaw out, uh, you know, during the day. But yeah, I'm glad I went with the envelope. I think if I wouldn't have done that plastic envelope, I think all of this would have sweated through with condensation. Uh, so other things I would change. I think whenever I get back home, I think I'm going to actually put a shelf across this V nose, maybe even two tiers and try to kind of get away from some of this. You can only pile stuff so high, uh, you know, and you need it 
you need, so you're constantly moving stuff. If I was able to stack stuff on shelves, I think I would be a little bit more organized. Uh, I'm also going to figure out some better situation for, for skinning or stuff. It's just been, you know, you're running around all day and then you come home and it's, you know, six degrees. You don't want to mess around outside. So it's been nice to be able to have that little bit of room to, to deal with that on the inside. Um, other things I think I, I, I'm going to look into. So the stove does great. The problem with the stove is it's such a tiny firebox. And I mean, you, you, I really don't have the room to put anything else in here. But it's such a tiny firebox. And the, the wood out here, the pine, is just not like what I'm used to. You know, our oak and, and stuff that we have at home. Um, it, you just cannot get an all-night burn time out of it. So if you don't want to wake up every couple hours and feed that fire, uh, it's cold. It's cold in the morning. And I just, I don't know, I have something against running that propane all night i know that they've got safeties built in but at the same time that propane is it's not a dry heat either so i think if i would run it all night i'd have condensation problems as well uh so i've been looking into these diesel heaters they're they're fairly fairly cheap and uh, i think if i can figure out some way to keep the fuel from gelling uh which i should be able to take care of that with some additives if i can keep that fuel from gelling uh, you know, in the super cold temperatures, I think I'm going to look into using one of those diesel heaters, uh, to kind of, kind of take up, uh, that, that all night. So where I'm not having to wake up all the time. Uh, I, I, they're pretty reasonable and I'm going to look into them. Now that, that's one thing I would change. Uh, like I said, the stove works great, but it's just not a big enough firebox to last all night. And if I could just have that diesel heater to kind of take up that last four or five hours of the night where I wouldn't have to wake up, it'd be great. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to look into that. Like I said, between that and the shelves, that's really all I got. I mean, it's this thing worked out pretty well. It's been two weeks. My uh, my beard trimmer died three days ago because it got so cold. So I am about ready to go home and take a real shower. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm about over the, the dude wipe sponge bass and heating some water up on the stove. I would like to go take a real shower been two weeks i've had a ton of fun out here in colorado um yeah, it's just been an absolute blast it's been very comfortable the weather has been great i mean it, it is i think 25 right now outside but it, it's so dry i mean it it feels like it's 40 degrees you know comparatively uh you know it's just something about this dry air but the view I mean, this is as cloudy as it has been in like a week. And it, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's the bluest sky. And I'll tell you what, at night, it's, um, it's, you see stars you didn't know <laughs> were in the sky. You come out here. I mean, I am in the middle of nowhere out here and it is awesome. So that's been my view for the last, what, three days whenever I wake up in the morning and go outside and take my morning pee. So I cannot, uh, I cannot complain one bit. I have not seen or heard another person in three days. So that's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. I know this was a long drawn out process, but Hey, I, I think some of y'all would, would really benefit from, uh, from something like this. So like I said, I can go home and within probably an hour hour and a half i could have this trailer stripped back down to where i could work out of it the very next day and that's kind of what i wanted and i've still been able to live out of it for two weeks so pretty dang cool but anyway we're gonna say goodbye to colorado get packed up head out we got uh about 1300 miles to to drive home and uh yeah been fun, y'all. Been fun. So hope you guys enjoyed this little build video. Uh, if you did, leave a comment down below. If you got some other ideas for me, uh, you know, this is definitely something that I can tweak over time. Uh, leave some comments. I, I would be very curious to see if any of you guys have ever done this or if you've got any kind of uh, ideas for me as well. So been very happy with it. Um, as far as cost, I meant to, to cover on that. So cost, overall what I had minus the cost of the trailer. Um, I spent $125 on the wood stove, modified the hell out of it. So if you want to do that, you can. If not, whatever. Modified stove, but it only cost me $125. If 
by taking out all that plywood myself, I saved myself quite a little bit of money. So between foam flooring, all the insulation, and the Luon, and the plastic, I had about $300 in it. So all said and done, about four, four twenty-five, four thirty, dollars rough and dirty, uh, in this thing. And I've been living in it for two weeks. So... You know, I am in the middle of where I want to hunt right now. I think I would have paid that in fuel just driving back and forth to town, let alone a hotel, right? So pretty reasonable, and it'll last me for, for years. I think I saved myself two two twenty five 225 uh, by, by keeping that other plywood. You know, plywood's just so expensive right now, so I didn't need another, like, eight or nine sheets. But, no, very happy with it. Uh, not a lot of cost overall and uh man it's just i mean i had everything else so i cannot complain all right y'all i'm gonna leave you with that view get my ugly mug out of the shot but as always i appreciate the view we'll see you on the next one